progress. Now, uh, I was 
one time I was teaching at the Teams conference, uh, which is a little high school student. And one student asked me a, a, a good question. Uh, the real, real question, how to answer this question. How can you show me? Can you show me how in the life of time span of 6,000 years, that one person can have seven billion things? Yeah, not, it's more than seven billion now, it's more like seven point eight and now. Uh, but this is a few years ago. Now, how do you answer that? Oh, that's the question of um, the math. <laughs> yeah, it's math, no? it's big math. Yeah, and in fact, on the surface, if you don't look, if you don't work out the math, it may seem quite common. Uh, but if you realize that actually population grow exponentially. All right. So, so for example, if you have one original couple, Adam and Eve, and if they have four descendants, right? And then the next step is not, it's not one, two, three. It's actually one, two, four, eight, and three. So the right here says the more you have, uh, the more descendants they're gonna have, right? Population that grows both exponentially. And one way of thinking about this is that if you want to go from two to 7.8 billion, which is around the roughly the population today, uh, even if more than that, uh, it means that you, you need to double certain income from two, uh, if you, you don't read the book by yourself, um, double two once, you get four, double four and a half times you get eight, you keep going. If you do that 30 times, you get actually way more, you get like, even more than eight billion. So, how, how fast do you think the population is doubling right now? So, we have about so close to eight billion people today. How fast do we go from four to four to eight? 40 years. In that 40 years, we're down from 4 billion to 8 billion. And so that's how fast population is, uh, is growing. Right? And we don't have to assume that it goes that quickly in the past. Even if you assume that it took longer in the past, let's say instead of it being 40 years, it doubles, it's 150 years, it doubles. How, how long would that take? Well, 30, 32 doubling, right? So you double 32 times, each time take 150 years. You multiply that, you get 4,800 years. So it's actually very reasonable. In fact, it fits the biblical time frame very well. Right? It only took 50,000 years for the population to get to be this big. It may surprise you that this is the same conclusion that many secular scientists uh, come to. Right? This is a, a, a historical world population estimate graph. It's not made by Christians, it's made by secular scientists. I noticed that all the population is it grows what's recent because they know the population grows exponentially. So you can, you can, you can mathematically track it back. You know, like from Jesus' time, there was much less people, right? And if you go back a few thousand years to the time that God created the world, then there's hardly anyone there at that time. So in fact, it, it, it fits the Bible very well. If you believe in evolution, if you believe in genetics, you've got a big problem because you have to believe the population actually went all the way back, right? But wait a second, how come the, the world population is not growing? Right? The population is growing, not many more people on this earth. Well, the only way we can explain that is to say that, well, many people were born, but they died. And guess what? The birth rate and the death rate match exactly for millions of years, right? Because if you had a little bit more growth, your population would grow. If you have a little bit less growth, you probably die out. So it's two equals four. Right? So you have to believe that for some reason, magically, population remains stable. The death rate and the birth rate were exactly the same for millions of years. Even then, it's not possible. We're not all wrong. If millions of years people are dying and people are buried for their death, and, you know, even 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 upon the evolution, they believe that people have been for their for millions of years. So hold on a second. Where are we? Uh, so actually, the, the Bible is uh, based on scripture, not history. Makes more sense. Uh, but it's not just the history. It's also the uh, or archaeology. Uh, it's also the science. Uh, I'm a, so uh, I love science. Uh, I, I do so I went to Brown Science at uh, USC and learned about the internet. So I work at Stanley Doctor. Uh, so this is you know, so that my day job is a doctor, but in my spare time I like to hear the doctor and uh, tell people about that. Um, 
what would DNA tell us about our history, about our human history? So DNA is uh, something that we all have. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's instructions to, to tell our body what to do, right? So how do we know that? So for the, the color of your, your, your hair, the color of your skin, the color of your eyes, are all in, uh, why, why are they the way they are? It's because there is DNA, there are instructions from your body how to make certain things. In, in, um, and uh, it's like a language, right? So that the, the DNA, the, the different uh, molecules are like letters. So you can think of it that we all we all have <laughs> all of us are a library of books of instructions, right? Encoded in this language of DNA. Um, so and these instructions, just like just like a factory, needs instructions to make like you know cars. You know, if, if you want to make a car right, you want the cars. You want to, 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 to put the right things in the right place, because otherwise that's the car won't work, right? Right? If you put the wheel with the door, if you put the door with the wheel, that's the car, right? You gotta have uh, at least the right instructions to put things together. In the same way, our cells in our body have to have these instructions to tell us what to do. Uh, and you have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Uh, 23 of them, so 23 from dad and 23 from mom, right? So 46 altogether. Uh, so you can think of it as uh, you're a library of information. I got 23 books from dad and 23 books from mom. So think, think of it this way, right? So, so, so you got these instruction books uh, and uh, they're all your body. Your, your body is amazing. God designed it so that it knows when to read which book <laughs> and to make certain things, you know, uh, at the right time and so on. Uh, there's a couple of special books. That, it, that, that tell you whether you are a man or a woman. Okay, so that if you get, uh, there's a couple of special books uh, called uh, the, the sex chromosomes. Uh, and if you get two X's, one from dad, one from mom, uh, then you're a woman. If you get one X and one Y, if the X, Y, then you're a man. Uh, so let's take a look at this. Uh, well, I'm sure this doesn't show up that well, but but uh, let, let me just ask you uh, a question. So uh, you know, let me ask you. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the the the, the, the weight of the chromosome for men and women. So let me ask the men in the in the audience, uh, where do you get your Y chromosome from? You get it from dad. Remember, your library that of information has to come from your dad and okay? So where, which, which library did the white chromosome come from? Oh. Right. It has to be the father, right? Does that make sense? <laughs> right? Because your dad, your mom doesn't have a white chromosome. That's why she's a woman, right? So your dad, so your white chromosome has to come from your dad. There's no other one. Uh, so, so then it's a, realize this, and they're like, hey, wait a second. We can use the white chromosome to investigate our ancestry. Because we know, like, because sometimes, uh, and analyzing your DNA can be a bit confusing because sometimes you don't know if it came from that or not, right? Like, if, that, if, if they do a study of my DNA, a particular part of my DNA, they're not sure if it came from that or not. But if you just look at my white chromosome, they know it came from that, right? It couldn't have come from my mom, right? So it's an easier way to, uh, to investigate your paternal ancestry. So that's, that's what they did, right? So this is a, this is, um, a, a, an article about the title is the white chromosome and what all of us. What is done? It's done by this uh, Julius here, uh, geneticist, uh, or I mean, he, he was reporting on this, uh, um, this this study, I should say. Uh, and their idea was they're going to look at people from around the world, different men from around the world, different parts of the world, and they're going to say, hey, look, I'm going to look at your white chromosome. Right? I'm going to take samples from, from of your Y chromosome, your Y book, your, your this book of instructions, the, the, the one that, 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 that tells you whether you're a man, that you're a man. Um, and I'm going to compare yours to other people's books. I see who's closer related. The idea was, you know, you know, for example, are, are Chinese people closer related to people in India? Right? Or are the people in India closer related to the people in Africa? Right? Or are the people like in North Africa and South Africa are they closer? Or is it North Africa and you? Right? Because it's by looking at their white chromosome and how close they are to each other, they can tell who is closer to them. That was the idea, right? Um, and 
and then you know Central America are you closer to South? Are you closer to the East? Right. So that was the what they were trying to investigate. Because after all, they believe in evolution. They thought that you know, originally the world was full of eight by creatures everywhere, right? Right. And then if that's the case, and they evolved over millions of years plus, like um, you have like uh, thousands and, and tens of thousands of uh, or even millions of eight by creatures evolving over millions of years. Well, you know, you could have this uh, red ape over here. Uh, that could be your ancestor. Or it could be this purple one. Right? It could be this yellow one. Uh, it could be this blue one. Right? So different part of people in different part of the world, they could have different ancestors, right? It could be, you know, do we, and, and that's what we're trying to see, you know, who, who came from the blue one, who came from the purple one, who came from the and so on. And by do, and they did they try to do this by looking at the languages, but they found something very surprising. They have secrets. So this is the, this is, I mean, this article was done in ninety five. It was done by Abushi. This is not a first thing. They have secrets part of the white chromosome from thirty eight men from around the world. Uh, to their surprise, they found no nucleotide difference. To their surprise, when they look at that segment, they're exactly the same. Now, why is it surprising? What did they say to their surprise? Because they thought, according to evolution, there's no reason that we all would come from one person, right? According to evolution, we all, the males of the gate evolving over millions of years, we could have all have different ancestors, right? This is just random, right? But it turns out that we all came from one person. That's why that when they look at the sequence, and they look at both sequence. It's not like they just look at small segments, right? Because if it's small segment by ten, they could be the same. They actually look at low sequence of 729 base pairs. So basically, remember this guy is not two books, right? So you get a letter. 729 letters are the same. Right? How can 729 letters be the same unless they copy from the same book? Right? Randomly, they're not going to be the same. That's the point. So, so they say that, that yeah, you look at all these people, look, we, we randomly picked 729, uh, six, uh, 729 uh, letter segments, and they're all the same. So if you guys have got to have the same answers. And, and again, I want to point out the, the look at the yellow. Surprisingly, unexpected, right? It's like they cannot say the word enough, right? Everywhere they say, surprise, unexpected. Why is it surprising when I'm scared because they don't believe in the body? Right? They, they believe in evolution. They believe that uh, we all came from a like creatures and therefore fish eat it. But if they believe the Bible, it wouldn't be a surprise. The Bible told us that we all came from a like creature. Right? When we study that, why do not different people? We put this extract that in fact uh, all people came from. And even more interesting that they look at the same sequence. The same people they study, they compare that to other animals, like chimpanzees and, and uh, gorillas, and they found it very different. So that means that we all came from original man who did not come from an ape body ancestor. Now, hold on a second. Uh, does the textbook say that humans and chimpanzees are only 1% different? Have you ever seen that in the textbook before? I know I did. Like when I was uh, studying, they said, so, so, so. So, so what, how, how do we reconcile this? Um, well, where does the idea come from? The idea that humans are, humans are only 1% different. Uh, it came from this, uh, this study by geneticists Alan Wilson and Mary Claire King in 1975. What happened in 1975? They declared that humans and humans are only 1% different. Right? So that's why, even though I'm old, uh, when I was in high school, we were seeing images of red. Uh, they repeated this uh, you know, for decades. But hold on a second. For those people who have some uh, idea about the history of genetics, when did the human genome uh, uh, become, uh, when did we actually know the sequence of the, 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 the LIGO, the exploration of the library? I right? remember we're all library. So, so they were trying to decode the whole library. When did they finish transcribing the whole library of information? It was not until 2000, <laughs> right? You, you see, this is a this this was a news uh, in June 26 in the White House by David.
then uh, U.S. President Bill Clinton, and then then uh, uh, the U.K. Prime Minister uh, Tony Blair had a joint conference. And, you know, guess what? We have the human genome. It's just uh, one of the most important, most wondrous maps ever produced by mankind. Of course, it is. Yeah, it's the human genome to 2022 as of to 2000, to the year 2000. How did you know the chimpanzee and the chimps are only on the condition in 1965? Right. We don't even know what our own uh, library looks like. How do you know our library is 1%, only 1% different from the chimpanzee? Right. 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 It was a guesstimate. It was a rough guesstimate that was wrong. In fact, we know to be wrong. This is an article from. 2007. This is it was in uh, uh, this was found by evolutionists. This is not found by Christian. It says the myth of one percent. The idea that uh, we are only one percent different from chimpanzee is, is not true. Uh, in fact, in the, in the, they were quoting a study done in 2000. So this was this was from the journal Science in 2007. Science, as you may know, is one of the most prestigious uh, uh, journals in sociology. They're, they're not, it's not a Christian uh, obligation. But they admit, look, we're not 100% different. In fact, in fact, even if you start looking at the prime difference, just look at the number of genes, just a number of factors, you can say. So a gene is like a part of a chromosome. So if you think of that, that whole library of you know, information that is provided, that is created on the library, then you can think that there are different books in it. That there are chromosomes that are books. And then within the books, there are different classes. So genes are not within classes. And, just even a number of chapters is already different, different by more than six percent. So of course, if you look at we're very, very common, just a number of chapters is already different, and obviously there there's like a human group of things. And in fact, in the year 2010, they look at the chin Y chromosome for the first time. Right? Remember that we talked about how the Y book, right? Uh, of, the, of the human beings are all very similar, and that's why we're all single by the human man. Now, the sequence, the entire chin Y chromosome uh, 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 the, 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 the instructions there, and then they look at the whole book, the whole Y book, as they call it, the Y chromosome book. And this is the conclusion the chin and the human Y chromosomes are horrendously different. Horrendously different. Now, I don't know about you, but do you think it's horrendous to be different from chimps? I don't think it's uh, there's nothing wrong with being different, right? But so, so why does the why does the, this author say it's horrendous? Uh, because it's horrendous for the world, right? If you do traditional evolution, if we felt chimps and humans share the same ancestor, so it's a total aspect, you know, it's horrendous, it's terrible because we're so different from each other. So how different do you find? Uh, you know, the chin white chromosome has only two thirds of many distinct genes and for gene families in human white chromosome. And only 47% as many protein for the male that is female. So we're talking about we're talking about one percent difference. We're talking about one third. We're talking about 53% difference. Right? Or if you so, so just to put it in a chart, you know, so this this is the, the comparison. You're talking about in, in the human 27 different chaps, uh, families and chimps only 18. In the human, you can see our number of genes, 78 uh, number of 78 genes. It's like 78 pages in that uh, uh, in that book, and the chimp only has 37. So they're so different. I mean, are these if, if the white the chimp or the thing other is books, if the chimpanzee white chromosome with that book only has 18 chapters and 37 pages. And uh, the human and Y chromosome book has 27 chapters and 78 pages. Are these the same book? They come from the same ancestor? Absolutely not. Right? They're, they're very, very different. Um, uh, but, it's, uh, but it's not just a, so, so from, from the Y chromosomes, we can see that our Y chromosome shows that we all came from Adam. We didn't come from other white species, uh, which we all came from Adam. We all come from our own genes. Uh, but, that, but there's one more. It's not just the white chromosome. There's another interesting uh, set of data uh, from the mitochondria. So the mitochondria are a part of the cell that produces energy, that are the power plants uh, of the cell. Now, what's special about mitochondria is that they have their own DNA. 
uh, the small segments of DNA compared to the rest of the, the, the nucleus that is much less and they have their own DNA. So let, let me ask you a question. In the, I asked you before that where the white point comes from. Uh, what about your mitochondria? Do, do your mitochondria come from your dad? Yeah, it could be either, but what do you think? Let, let, let me see here. Well, this is so these are the mitochondria. Do they have their own their own box? They have their own DNA. This is you many years ago. Right? Uh, well, no, many years uh, in the future you'll be in that thing. Uh, so no, no, notice, notice uh, how much bigger the egg is compared to the sperm. Okay. So where do you where do you think most of your mitochondria? Mom, of your mom, you know, right? Because the, the egg has much bigger, requires much more energy, so you need having much much more mitochondria, right? The sperm has very tiny amount, so most of it, most of the energy. So same as with the uh, with white flamingo, now we can look at from the female side, right? Before we can look at your paternal ancestry, right? How how your your your, your father's and your father's father and so on, where was the original case man? Now we look at first original woman. And guess what they found? Again, same thing. They look at women have lots of chromosomes. They look at the mitochondria, and at the end, which is because they all have mitochondria, obviously, men and women from around the world. And guess what they found? Mitochondrial DNA among all people around the world are very simple. So is that we all came from one original person. Right? So so you got your mitochondrial DNA from your mom, and she got hers from your grandma. And your grandma got it by great grandma. Now, who are your more similar to? In this sequence, who are you more similar to? In terms of your mitochondrial DNA. <laughs> Or you think what's similar to your mom, right? Because you're she's closer to you, right? Yes, but more time is what happened with your great grandma. She she would have uh, her herself would be make, uh, making copies of herself, right? So mitochondrial mitochondria and the mitochondrial DNA have been making copies of herself over time. And sometimes when they make copies, mistakes happen for mutation. Okay? Uh, so that mutation sometimes get passed on to the next generation. So the more generations there have been. Then the more mutations are mutations are seen there, so there are more differences. Right? But what they found was, hey, guess what? People around the world are very similar. That means what? That means that not many mutations are passed. That means that actually, not only are we all came from the same, we all came from the same woman, that woman lived naturally. Right? Because you know, they, so they, they had this idea of the mitochondrial clock, is that if the, the more the more similar we are, the more likely that that our uh, that, that that was the woman, the original woman that gave gave rise to us lived recently, right? Because as time goes on, the more generations you have, the more differences accumulate, right? In this uh, if, the, the less, if you have less time, you have less differences, but they're closer to each other. If you have more time, more generations, then there'll be more differences. So they're looking at these differences now as evolutionists, they assume that oh yeah, this woman, the first of all. As, as a is they assume that there should be such a woman. <laughs> that, that, that's the beginning. Uh, but not by no choice, right? That's what they are housing. But they, they, there is such a woman. They call her the mitochondrial Eve, the, the woman that gave rise to all of them. But now, they, they still say, hold on a second, if you want to hold on to evolution, so what do they do? They say that this woman must have lived a long time ago, right? Because they, evolution means long time. They, they cannot have, they need you know, they need a long period of time. But there's a problem. Because they actually look at the uh, the mutation rates, trying to see how fast these uh, changes were happening, and they found that oh guess what, the mutation rates were much faster than they thought, uh, which means that if the mutations were really faster, then that means that the differences that we have now um, must have occurred very quickly. Um, and so they so they, they calculated so this is and this is not a question, this is a from an evolutionist uh, back in 19, 1998. For example, researchers have calculated 
the mitochondria means the woman whose mitochondrial DNA was ancestral to that of all living people. Uh, originally, they thought lived 100,000 or 200,000 years ago. Using the new plot, the actual data from the calculations they made, it would be a near 6,000 years. 6,000 years. Let me think about that. So, a woman that's an ancestor to all humans lived 6,000 years ago. I think I read that in a book. Uh, and and, but, and there's been, been even more since 1998. There was another study done uh, later on in 2012. I think it's the same, same idea, the same type of thing that seems that that would make. Now, so now we have a model of the woman that would actually live baby. Uh, this is, so all the ones I've collated before are from evolutionists. This one is actually a study done by Christian, uh, a group geneticist, Dr. John Stanford and Dr. Rob Carter. Uh, they looked at, they also looked at mitochondrial. Uh, data from different people around the world, and they found that on average, we're only about 22 mutations from. So, so they, they tried to, to estimate what you need to look like, and we're only 22 mutations away from. It. So, 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 I mean, 22 mutations that, that imagine in a few thousand years, let's say about 200 generations or 300 generations, for the very easy to accumulate that many mutations. So, from a physical point of view, the data fits perfect. But if you believe in evolution, you got these problems. If you're only 20 mutations away, how can that be if the gene or, or what if you evolve from those years fits much, much more mutations? I think that's a good answer. Okay. Right, so given the current mutation, uh, my current mutation rate, we would only take it a few thousand years. But what happened then? So what about different rates is there? Right? I remember my question you know, when I came to Eastern Canada and people told me about Jesus. I said, hold on a second, how do you do it, right? Is it really true that you know people would look so different all came from one original man or woman, right? How, how does that that was skin color? How can we have different skin color uh, if we only you know, originally came from Adam and Eve? And, and what, what skin color would we have? Well, it's actually it's not it's not as difficult for us to answer as you think. All you need is to have enough variation in the beginning. In fact, the, this is the website that um, that came out uh, again done by evolutionists not too long ago. Um, the, the, about the genetics of skin color. The dark skinned uh, people of southern India, Australia, and New Guinea, for example, did not independently evolve their color simply because they were too favored. They inherited ancestral dark heredity. So when I was in school, they taught us that actually the different colors are true given evolution. And the story is that you know people move to different areas. Right, you move to the dark area with more sun, and then you evolve a darker skin, particularly if you're something with the sun. Right, if every you move the area with less sun, you evolve a lighter skin, so you can absorb more sunlight with more energy than you need. Right, that was the story I was told. The story is wrong. No, the, the differences do not come from evolution, they came from uh, inheriting those differences from the, the, the ancestors. So all the all I had to do was for God to create Adam and Eve that they had enough variation and enough uh, uh, variation of diversity of traits in their original library. So there, there's enough different different data in the library to give rise to the to future generation. Let me give you an example. It actually doesn't take much. Uh, imagine uh, so 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 we think about a lot of different colors, but actually our colors are mainly based on this pigment called melanin. So the fact that some people are darker just means you have more melanin, and some people are lighter because of less melanin. Um, so, for example, you see this lady here, all oh, this lady here has very little melanin in her skin. Okay. But you see this lady here is very far right, she has much more melanin. Now, a lot of this is genetic. Now, if you if you under the sun a lot, your body will make more melanin, which means you become tan. But a lot of how much your body makes is based on genetics. Okay, so it's just a matter of how much melanin and and and, and remember in the science you're moving in some genes that control how much uh, melanin you make. Let's imagine in our gene, they identify six genes. Okay, and in fact, there are many more. They identify six genes that control how much melanin you make. Uh, but let's go with six. Imagine there are six genes, 
and they all are divided to make different amounts of money. Right? So you have the first one here, the dark one there, it means that you tell the body, okay, look, look, this is a, the instruction saying, look, make more melanin. Okay. Uh, and then there's instructions for making quite a little, quite a bit, some, small amounts, very little, and there the end. So your body may have different genes, and they can tell your body to make different amounts. Make different amounts of melanin. So imagine if we had a new had a big variety of genetic information going. Right? So let's say that they had all these two genes. So by the way, what, what color would they be? What color would their skin be? If they have some genes that tell them to make more, some genes that tell them to make less, what color would they be? It's a mild, mild. Yeah, somewhere in the middle, right? So not, not, not very dark and not very, very light. And exactly, if you look around the world, the majority of people around the world are somewhere in the middle. Right. You have some, you have, you have that extreme groups that are very dark, some groups that are very light, some more people are familiar. Uh, but what happens, remember that you get half your genes from your dad, half your genes from your mom. What if Adam gave three three genes to Cain? And Eve also gave these three to Cain. What skin color would Cain have? <laughs> yeah, he's quite white. Right. Right? What if Adam made these three to Abel and he also gave these three to Abel? What color would his genes have? Quite a lot. In one generation, as long as we have enough variations, we start to find, right? And it, because we all get half of our the half of the, and that's why you know you can have siblings sometimes don't look very similar, right? Because you can get quite different genes from the dad and mom. Right? This is God's uh, arrangement that you know there can be so much variation, so much that, that's why life is interesting, right? You don't, you don't imagine going around the world every time you, you see someone you look, you look, it's like you look in the mirror. You look you see the exact same face. You don't want that, right? It's nice to see all kinds of different variety of people. Right? And God arranged it because there is a you know, he put variation, uh, diversity in Adam and Eve in the original you know, genes. And so they can so that you know Cain can be very light, Adam can be very dark, Seth can be somewhere in between. It, all kinds of combinations are possible. Now how about the next generation? Well, that can be even more different, right? Because imagine Cain can marry someone that's of a similar skin color, or can be even lighter in some ways. So yeah, you can, you can and in fact, there's a modern example. This is a real, real story, true story. Uh, this these are twins. Do you believe that? These are twin twin sisters. Uh, Remy and Kia are twins, obviously not identical twins, they're fraternal twins, right? So they they uh they uh just like Abel and like just like um the um Jacob and Esau, right? They were twins, so they're quite different. Uh so so uh Remy and Kian, they're 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 born so both of the parents are mixed. So both the parents have uh have a mixed uh, uh heritage and then so so you can see that Remy uh she's uh she's uh, not like darker and she's inherited more genes that made more melanin from both parents. And then Kian inherited the lighter genes, so that's why it's a, a little bit actually quite good. Can you imagine going to school? Let me introduce you to my students. Yeah, this is the future. It'll be kind of fun. Yeah. So you can't, so this study has established uh, to establish research undercutting the whole notions of race. The notion of race is old. You know, we shouldn't be thinking about people as different races anymore. That's an old notion. You can't use skin color to classify genes any more than you can use other traits, complex traits like height. Just like you're not going to say there's a tall race and short race, right? There's a race of short people and a race of tall people. We don't say that. In the same way, we should not be saying there's a race of white people or black people or you know, whatever. There's, 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 there's no such thing because we're all based on that. But a wonderful message, right? You know, the Bible has a wonderful message to the world. Right? If you believe the Bible, imagine the whole world believes the Bible, believes in God's word. There will be no racial discrimination. It will be a good thing. We're all in the man. So, but, but what, about, what about this? Because remember, I, I came from uh, that, I'm, I'm not a Chinese back here. And uh, if Adam is the ancestor of all people, including the Chinese, then is there any evidence ancient Chinese people knew about God? 
And so after all, if all four can argue, that means that my ancestors in China, uh, they would have come from Adam and Eve too, right? But is there any reason to believe that ancient Chinese people came, or, or other people, originally came from Adam and Eve? Well, let us go back, because remember, if you look at the, the, the ancient uh, thing of Genesis, how the different languages, the different people groups split apart. Well, uh, there's an event in Genesis 11 uh, where the people rebelled against God, right? And the power, and they were trying to use the power to reach God, to reach the heavens. How are they? And it says that uh, God, he, the, God confused their language, right? Come, let us go down and there is confused their language so they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth. And they see to the city. Therefore, his name is called Babel because there, because there, the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the earth. So, originally, people had one common language, but God at that moment confused their language, so the language is very different. Which means that the Chinese language, like all other languages, came from the, the, the event of the Babel. Now, what's very interesting about the Chinese language is that. Is that the, the has symbols and the, from the, the, the picture of the symbol, you have an idea, the picture has an idea of what it's meaning. And the shock of it is very interesting. So, this is the, uh, the, the earliest known uh, Chinese language is the, the, the Yahoo, the Oracle Roman script, right? This, um, the, this is the, the oldest script that we can find. Um, now, some of the words are very interesting. Now, let me introduce this idea first. Uh, you know, what, what is right to be? According to the Bible, uh, to be right is wrong. To be righteous, um, the only way to do that is by believing in Jesus, right? Even the righteousness of God through faith in Christ, Jesus Christ, to one all who believe, where there's no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We have all done things or said things or thought things, and we should have, we know that, right? We've taken something that doesn't belong to us, we've lied, and we've worked with the Holy Spirit, and so on. And there's a price to pay for that. But, but God doesn't, God loves us, and He doesn't want us to pay for that price ourselves. And that's why He sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. So the only way we can be right with God is to accept that Jesus did that for us. There's no other way. We cannot be right on our own. Right? Because I can never do, so if I've done wrong in the past, just because I do more right, it doesn't make up for the wrong that I did. Right? Imagine that, you know, I work at a medical doctor. Imagine that you know I got in a fight one day and then I accidentally killed someone in, in the fight. Can I say that? Hold on a second. You know, I went to the doctor, I, I went to Africa, and I saved like uh, uh, like hundreds of uh, children from, from from their sickness. Does that make up for me killing this person? What do you think? No, if you ask that person's mother, his the, the person's father, they say, no way. Right? Doing right can never make up for doing wrong. Right? Doing right is so supposed to. But doing wrong is a price to pay for that. But Jesus, who never done anything wrong, he paid, he's willing to pay that price. And the only way that we can be saved, the only way we can be right with God, is to accept that Jesus did that for us. There's no other way. And that, that's why, yeah, if you think, remember the God of Eden, do you remember that when Adam did sin in rebellion against God? They tried to use beings cover themselves, right? They were thin. So what did God do? For, for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Why did God do that? Because how do we make a tunic of skin? How do we make how do we make a, a clothing out of animal skin? Because we kill an animal. Right? There has to be a sacrifice. Right? To make up for sin, the sacrifice needs to be made. So Jesus is our sacrifice. He died on the cross and sacrificed so that we can be, that our sins can be saved. Right? And that's why when Jesus came, this is what John, John said. Actually, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus is the Lamb of God. Right? Uh, so in the Garden of Eden, the, 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 the first child of this animal was killed by a lamb. Right? The lamb probably was the, the lamb probably was the first animal that should die. In the, the Garden of Eden, there was no death. Right? So, so the first animal died when uh, the lamb made the clothing to cover uh, the sin that Adam had. So, having said that, this is what righteousness is according to the Bible. 
right? I hope you're thinking of this. But what the word provided is in Hamas. Now, is this war? Is this war? Now, for the South, if you don't know, I'm going to let me break it down for you. This word, oh, this is the original Yahoo, the original in the original language, right? Nice that change over the years, but you can trace back to the original language, the earliest you can find. It's actually a, a compound of two words. The word you want to see is on this. It's actually made up of two words. The top word is the word man. The bottom word is the word for I. It's a pronoun, I or me. So why does it mean to be righteous according to the, the Chinese language? Righteousness is a man over me. Right? Only when the land covers me and all righteous. I cannot be righteous by myself. When the land covers me, I'm righteous. Now, how would the ancient Chinese have this word in the language? Well, I think this is something that God left there, right? They can remember the power of Abel, God can use the language. Right? God left this thing. In the language, to tell people that look, the only way to be righteous is to have the land cover you. But there's not another one. Uh, in, the, in the book of Mark, Jesus talked about the evil that comes from within, right? And talking about adulteries, fornication, murder, theft, and covetousness. This is the word of covetousness, meaning to be greedy, we want something that doesn't belong to. This is, and it's a, the, the word, the word in Chinese is this word I highlighted here, the word at the end, finally here. And again, it's very interesting because what this word made of is a word made of in the middle there's a woman. It's a woman, and then the, in front of two trees. Now, hold on a second. Now, if you haven't made up a word, let's say you're trying to, trying to make up a word for covetous, right? You want something that doesn't belong to. How would you make that work? You might say, well, put a man in front of some gold, right? A man in front of silver. That, that sounds like public right? Why is it a woman in front of two trees? Isn't that very strange? Well, what's the very first episode, the first time in history that human beings come to something? Happens in front of me. He was in front of two trees. Right? In the, in the book of Genesis, it says that out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree to grow that is pleasant to sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the, midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. There were two trees. Tree of life, right? That you eat from that tree, you, 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 have, you receive life from God. There's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat at that tree, that means that. You are saying, I'm the judge of good and evil, right? Because if, if, if God says you shouldn't eat that tree, if you obey God, if you don't eat from that tree, then you're listening to God saying that you're good and evil. You're saying, God, you know good and evil, I'll listen to you. When you say that back to yourself, what you're doing is you're saying, I know better than God. I know what good and evil is. I'm going to decide for myself. So in front of those trees, eat covetous. Right? She wanted to take the food that she had said she shouldn't. So yes, publishing is a woman before the tree. That was the first time. Now, how would that word find itself in the tree in, in Chinese? How would any Chinese use that word to, de to describe publishing? To, 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 to mean publishing? I think the only reasonable explanation is that God put it there. Right, when God, when the people were scattered in the power of Abel, God put that there as a hint uh, to the people that look, this is covered, right? In the, in the garden, in front of their trees. Uh, because uh, Chinese people, just like old people, are the image of Jesus. But we'll do one more. Is the Chinese word for goat? The Chinese word for goat. Um, it's made up of uh, two characters. One character is, uh, is a vessel, like a small vessel. A goat is a small vessel. Uh, and eight mouths, eight people, right? So it's a so a boat, which is a big vessel, is a small is a small vessel. It's a vessel that has eight people, right? Eight mouths. You know, if, if, if you say you say you have different uh, eight mouths to feed, then you get eight people. Right? 
Now, why is it eight people? Like, why is it that that's only eight people? Well, that's an interesting, the Bible describes that that's only eight people, right? No one would have put son, his wife, and his son's wife into the ark, which is a water of the flood. In the days of Noah, when the ark was being prepared, it was agreed that a soul was saved through the water, right? In the, in, in, Noah's, in the ark, the ark was big enough for many, many more people, but unfortunately, only eight people listened to God and got into the ark. That includes uh, Noah and his wife, as well as the sons of Noah uh, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the wives. Again, why did that world find itself in this tiny land? Right? Because it's not a very awkward time to come out of this place. But again, the only reasonable explanation is that it's a God's way of telling us uh, that He is the God of all people. Uh, uh, in Chinese, by the way, in, in, uh, in ancient China, there are a number of legends about the flood. They are very similar. So I won't, I won't go into detail, but uh, if you're interested, I can talk to you about this after the sermon today. But uh, these, these stories about the flood in the ancient China are, are very similar to the flood story, the, uh, the, the flood account in the, in the Bible. Uh, and that is that all around the world. It's not just in China, in different parts of the world, there are legends of the flood. And think about it, right? Why is it always a flood? You know, yeah, if, if, if it's just a flood, if it's a if the flood is just a legend, something that people make up, you would imagine different parts of the world people make up the same flood, right? Just like one, well, one people group that said, look, there was a big fire in Korea yesterday. You know, uh, there was a big, uh, big there was a meteor shower, you know, whatever. But it's always a flood. You see stories of the flood story in the world everywhere. Why? Because all people came for you from Adam and Eve. All people were for you came. From Noah and from the Tower of Babel, and that's why the same story is brought here. Yeah. Um, and maybe one last question. If the God is the God of the known nations, why did he create Abraham? Because some people will say, well, that's okay, you know, why did he talk to me? The chosen people, the Jewish people, and why did he create others? You know, people in Canada, people in, in, uh, in, 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 in uh, Asia, people in Hong Kong, and anywhere, right? Why did he create the Jewish people? Why did he create Abraham? Well, let's take a look. Why is it? Right? Uh, for Abraham was 90 years old. The law appeared to Abraham. And Abraham had a name. He changed his name. God changed his name. Why? Right? Uh, God talked to him. And so for me, behold, I covenant with you. And you shall be a father of many nations. You shall be a father of many nations. And no longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. The word Abraham means father. The word Abraham means the father of many nations. So why did God create Abraham? It wasn't because he really wanted to save the one from the people. It was because he wanted Abraham to carry the message of salvation to all the nations. Right? And just to make it clear, he didn't change his name. Look, you know, your mission is not just to your people. Your mission is to all nations. That's why I'm going to call you the father of many nations. It's like the father of all the nations. Why did God take Israel? Right? Because some people say, no, it doesn't mean that God doesn't care about other people. But it's not why did God take Israel? Now, notice in, in, in Deuteronomy that God makes a point. It is not because of your righteousness. It's not like you guys are better than other people. Right? Or uprightness of heart that, that you go and forgive and possess their land, but because of the wickedness of the nations that the Lord your God has you know, from before you, and that He may fulfill the word which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob. Therefore, just to make it, just to, to, to emphasize the point, he repeats it. Therefore, understand that the Lord your God is not giving you this good land to possess with your righteousness, for you are still nation. It's not because that he's making the Israel is worth everything. But it was number one, the times of people who were already there, that they were doing evil things like child sacrifice, killing their own children, right? Killing them, uh, burning them with fire and so on, right? To punish them. And also to fulfill the promises made to Israel. That's why. Yeah. It wasn't that the, the God's original intention was always for the salvation of all people. Right? He did not say the one Jew because that he only cares about himself. He used that, he, he, he wanted his message to be carried through Abraham to all the nations. Uh, and that's why, who's the son of Abraham? 
It's not by Torah. You don't become a son of Abraham by Torah. Look at what happens here. Remember in Luke, uh, when you remember the two of the guy that was born and then from the city uh, to deliver Jesus, uh, he, he believed, right? And what did Jesus say? He says, if you have to do that, I said, Lord, look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. If I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I have to go forth. And Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house because he also is the son of Abraham. So the son of man has come to seek and save that which was lost. Today, this salvation is not him. He's a, he's a Jew. He's been the Jewish person all his life. So why is that today salvation has come to this house because he's also the son of Abraham? Because you should not become a son of Abraham by, by birth. Right? He was born as a Jew, always he, he lived as a Jew all his life, but he was not a son of Abraham until he believed. And that's why today is salvation. Right? And, and therefore know that only those who are saved are salvation. So um, and, and so God is about all nations. And how did that happen? Because God blessed Abraham with a seed, right? In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And to your seed, you will be blessed. So this is God's salvation plan, right? Because what happened is that you know, God created all people as a one human race, descendants of Adam and Eve, right? But our ancestor rebelled against God's plan. Our ancestor, all ancestors, doesn't matter if you're you know, what, what the nationality you are, all our ancestors, Adam and Eve, rebelled against God first time, right? In the garden of Eden. And then uh, being the one, our ancestors rebelled again, right? And that's why the blood came. And then our ancestors rebel again and all of it. So three times people rebel against God. God said, look, you guys are doing all kinds of evil when you're together. The only thing we can I, the, the only thing that's gonna solve the problem is after scattering, right? After scattering you, and then you that's why you complete the enemy, right? But to scatter you, he didn't want to abandon us, right? He did not abandon us, but he wanted to save us and he wanted the message of salvation to be carried forward. How do you do that? To take one person that was faithful to Abraham. Right? So one person Abraham was faithful. So through Abraham's descendants, the message of salvation was being passed down. Sometimes I wonder, you know, if instead of Abraham, if one of our ancestors was faithful, maybe the gospel would be passed down to Chinese to one else. Right? Because remember, it wasn't because the Jewish people were more righteous, right? It was because God was being faithful to the promises of Abraham. Um, but, but anyway, the, the point was, that was God's plan, right? It's to, to not to just save the Jews. It's actually to use uh, Abraham to pass on his message of salvation to all of us, all nations. So that, and then the seed of Abraham is Jesus, right? That's the ultimate plan, right? Is that from through the blood of the, through the blood line of Abraham, the Jews will be born, and he will be uh, the savior of not just the Jews, but the whole world. Uh, so that is, God's love for us. That is God's love for us, for us. And that's what I found out. You know, and that's that, and eventually I believe, uh, because I realized that the God of the Bible is not the God of the Bible is not just a God for the Western people, the God of the is a God for all people. And I want to share this gospel with all people. Guess what? We're actually all related by blood. Right? God made of all of us. All of us are descendants of Adam and Eve. Next time you see someone on the street, it doesn't matter what color their skin is, they are a descendant of Adam and Eve. They need to come back to God, just like we all have to come back to God. Because God loves us and He has sent this message of salvation uh, to His son. And I pray that uh, all of you, uh, if, you, if some of you already believe, wonderful, please hold on to that and share that with your brothers. And if some of you still don't, uh, trust in Jesus for your salvation. I, I pray that you make that decision today. Let's pray. Uh, dear Father, we thank you for the time that we have today. Thank you for your plan, your master plan of salvation. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for our sins. Thank you for making all of us from one to us that we realize that we all belong to one family and we belong to you in a relationship with you. Lord, if there are some of us uh, that have questions, have doubts, I'm not sure, we pray that you help us to relate with God to, uh, to, uh, to answer those doubts. Um, and that we can, therefore, they, they're not going to be free us from the relationship with you. We pray and we thank you in Christ's name. Amen.
Thank you, Reverend.